403b. And so, you know, we, we know about the 401k. What is the 403b? Well, it is actually a similar sister uh, plan to uh, the 401k, believe it or not. The 503b is a type of retirement savings account, and it's uh, used as a tax-exempt vehicle, usually for public employees, um, teachers, um, religious uh, groups, ministers, and uh, it's, it's very similar to the 401k. It's just usually used for specific groups. A lot of teachers, if you're tuning in, um, some nurses, you'll be familiar with the 503b. Now, um, employees usually establish this 503, this 403b um, in, in a few options in terms and types of assets that the employees can invest through their individual accounts. And it's a type of annuity. Um, it's a deferred annuity where um, it's, it's tax sheltered to benefit the employee. And with the annuity contract, uh, the insurance company that's backing the 403B, it can invest it in either uh, mutual funds or in uh, fixed products. Um, and so it can be either a mixture of securities, fixed products, and or mutual funds in order to achieve the growth for the 403B. So as we talk about it today, we're going to talk about specifics. We're going to talk about the benefits and the pros and cons like we usually do. And we're going to talk about um, the, the best um, um, details that's within this vehicle uh, that you need to know about, the uh, specific details. Um, some of them are in this 403B that's not necessarily in the 401K and you have to be cautious in making sure that you're aware. So we're gonna talk about a lot of those. We're also gonna talk about penalties that are involved um, if you withdraw from it early and how to avoid some of those penalties. So let's start with some of the benefits. What are some of the benefits of the 403B? And what are also some of the similarities to the 401K? Um, with the 403B, uh, employers can match uh, the employee's contribution dollar for dollar for the first 3% um, from your payroll. So that's very significant. Uh, the employer, I'm going to repeat it, they can match your contribution in this vehicle dollar for dollar up to 3%. So instead of it being a 3% uh, contribution, it then becomes 6%. So it doubles in the amount of money that can be invested in the vehicle. And so uh, both the company um, that's making the contribution and the employee that is contributing their 3% um, into this um, investment can write off the 403B contributions off their taxes. So we have the 3% match, that's one benefit, and then we have the tax write-off, second benefit. And so money from the 403B can grow tax-deferred for decades. Now, remember last week we talked a little bit about tax-deferred and opposed to tax-free. When um, the taxes are taken off up front, it's tax-free. When the taxes are deferred, then you get to earn your money and the uh, dividends um, from that investment for decades and you do not have to pay any taxes on it until you decide to withdraw. So that's the difference between tax-free and tax-deferred. Sometimes people are a little confused as to, okay, what is tax-free, what is tax-deferred? So that's the main difference. The tax-free is taken off up top, tax-deferred is taken off at the end, if that makes any sense. So account holders can take out loans against their, 403, their 403B as well uh, when they have an emergency need or they're in need of, of emergency funds. The 403B uh, does offer options where you can take out a loan against it, but the funds must be paid back 
just like they must be paid back in the 401k. Um, and, or, of course, there will be significant tax consequences. So, um, the importance of this 403b for teachers and um, religious um, employees, uh, public employees, the importance of the 403b is realizing what the benefits and the drawbacks are. So we've just talked a little bit about the benefits. Let's talk a little bit about the contribution limits. Um, now for the 403b, the government does allow for a pretty high uh, contribution option. Uh, contributions for the 403b can go all the way up to $49,000. $49,000 um, per fiscal year. And uh, that that's a pretty high amount because, as you know, with the IRA and with several other vehicles, uh, you don't have that high contribution amount. So if you're a high earner, this is definitely a great option uh, to save for your retirement and to include in your retirement strategy. Uh, so the maximum payroll amount that can be contributed, again, uh, is up to $49,000 per fiscal year. And if you're taking it from your payroll and getting a deduction, a payroll deduction, then that amount would be $16,500. So if you're putting in a lump sum, uh, you're a high earner and you're able to put in a lump sum, you have up to... 49000 that you can put in, and if you're getting um, contributions from your um, payroll, then that amount is a little lower, but it's, it's actually uh, still a significant amount. Um, so for uh, tax year, uh, for 2016, you have up to $18,000 that you can put in, and then there is another feature that allows you to put in even more money if you are 50 years old or older. So that's another wonderful feature of the 403B. If you're 50 years old or older, you can add an additional $5,500 per year in the 403B. Isn't that fabulous? That feature is called the catch-up for the 403B contribution. So that's a special element of this vehicle you're allowed to put in up to $18,000 from your payroll deduction. Plus, if you're 50 years old or older, you have an additional $5,500 that you can contribute for a total of $24,000 for tax year 2016, for instance. And so you ask yourself, oh, wow, why am I given that, that extra opportunity? Well, it's actually a, an extra perk within the 403B because, you know, by the time you're 50, if you have not been saving or if, if you know, some of your retirement got deplenished during the financial crisis of 2008 or what have you, whatever the reasoning for your retirement um, um, savings being depleted or decreased, this gives an opportunity to add an additional boost to this vehicle. So with the 403B, uh, this feature is called the catch up, which makes sense because you want to catch up on whatever you missed out on or whatever you lost or got depleted. And so it, uh, the name for it is actually uh, very apropos. So um, some people are eligible for this. Again, if you are 50 years old or older, you are eligible for this. And it's available to employees who have worked for a qualified organization for 15 years or longer and have contributed less than $5,000 per year on an average to the 403B. Um, often this special feature um, uh, is referred to, uh, again, as the 15-year rule. That's the official um, uh, context name for this vehicle. 15-year rule um, with the IRS, and, and, and if you wanted to dig a little bit deeper on your own and do some homework, 
uh, that would be the IRS publication 571 if you wanted to find out more information. If you said, hmm, I fall into that category and I'd like to know more information about it, uh, you would be able to uh, um, go right to that publication, IRS publication 571, and get that information. So again, you're listening to Jackie Dussard Sanders on Money Matters on Smooth 90.5 FM, and I'm so glad that you decided to come back and join me this week as we talk about the money matters that affect your life. You want to be informed. You want to be in the know. You want to know what's going on with your money, especially when it comes to your retirement planning. And so Money Matters is the show. Tell everybody, tell all your friends, tell your family, tell your co-workers to tune in every Friday from 11 to 12 with Jackie Dussard Sanders on Money Matters on Smooth 90.5 FM HD. Now, and when we come back, we're going to take a, a music break in just a moment. And then when we come back, we're going to talk a bit more about the specifics of this particular uh, vehicle, the 403B, uh, um, in comparison to the 401K. Now, we've talked about this for the last few weeks now. We've talked about um, pension plans uh, as it relates to the 401K, uh, traditional pension plans as it relates to um, IRAs and Roth IRAs. And uh, this week, we're talking about the 403B, which some people um, aren't even aware of the vehicle 403B. So that is the, the goal of our show, is to make sure that everyone is informed of these vehicles. And so when you are planning for your retirement, you want to make sure you have enough money. You want to make sure you have enough funds for you to... Um, to be in, for you to, to make sure that you, um, you want to make sure that you have enough funds um, in place for your retirement. And so this is important um, for all of us, uh, you know, whether you are a baby boom, a baby boomer, or if you're in the uh, millennial generation. So uh, the importance of making sure that you are putting aside enough funds. And I'm, remember we talked a couple of weeks ago about how many people lost funds during the crisis in 2008. And we talked about um, uh, one of my neighbors who uh, had to extend working um, for additional, several additional years before they could finally retire because they lost uh, so much of their money um, of, that was invested in their 401k. They worked for one of the airlines, if you recall, if you were with me a couple, couple of weeks ago. We talked about it. And so the importance of making sure that you are investing and diversifying your investment vehicles for retirement is key to make sure that you can have the quality of life that you're looking forward to um, and making sure that, you know, you're, you're even now, uh, and I was talking to my husband uh, a couple of days ago and we were talking about um, uh, the importance of making sure we take care of ourselves in every aspect. We need to make sure that we're physically, spiritually, emotionally and financially astute when it comes to planning for retirement. And so, um, you know, we, we were just talking about how uh, the differences with how some people um, um, can be in their 60s and 70s and be so vibrant physically and then others are really struggling. And so we were trying to, to figure out, well, you know, what's the reasoning for that? Um, you know, to, of course, we know it's important to exercise and to eat well. And just as you exercise and eat well physically and make sure that you are taking care and, and, and taking care of yourself physically, it's important to do the same financially. 
So that when you get to that point where you are retired, you um, are vibrant. We were talking about a couple of friends that we have that we visited last year in Florida, um, and they're uh, a little bit older than we are, and we were just talking about how vibrant they are. And so, you know, it's important to make sure that you exercise in your physical body, eat well, and that you plan well for your financial retirement. So when I come on every Friday from 11 to 12 on Money Matters and we're talking about um, the different uh, financial investments for retirement and how we can make sure that the monies that we uh, put aside um, will accumulate in the manner that we want it to so that we are well protected for retirement, it's because I care. I care um, not only about my own retirement, but I care about your retirement. So whatever knowledge that I have, you know, it's exciting for me to share that information with you. And in the coming weeks, we're going to have several uh, guests on. Uh, in the coming weeks, coming months, we'll have CPAs on. We will have attorneys on just talking about your money matters. And um, whenever I'm doing a workshop or, or doing some type of seminar on money matters, uh, I will definitely keep you abreast of that information so you can come on out and join me. And so um, it's important. It's very important, especially in our community, because uh, financial literacy has not always been um, something that we have stressed as a priority. And it's time for us to change that, that it's time for us to change that. And so hopefully, um, as you tune in to Money Matters every week, you will be a part of that change. So the 403 um, uh, withdrawals, uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit because remember we talked about it with the 401k, we talked about it with the IRAs. Um, the 403b also has um, withdrawals and uh uh, limits, age limits. It's the same, 59 and a half. It's pretty much the same across the board as far as that's concerned. And at that time, you can begin taking um, withdrawals from your 403B without any penalties. You will simply just pay uh, regular income taxes on the money you take out um, of the account because remember, it's tax deferred. So uh, because it's tax deferred, you're not responsible for any taxes until the end, and hopefully you're in a lower tax bracket so you can benefit. Now, uh, if you're younger um, than that age and you uh, need to withdraw funds for some type of um, family or emergency um, occurrence, then there is still that 10% tax penalty on top of the uh, income tax um, penalties uh, that you will incur when you file your taxes. So um, it's important for us to consider all of that. I mean, life happens, things happen, and if if there's an emergency and you have to pull money out of it um, for a need, then that's just something that, that you have to do. Um, just be mindful that um, you have to uh, roll over those funds taken out within 60 days for just about every retirement vehicle, whether it's the um, Roth IRA, um, whether it's the IRA or whether it's the 401k, um, whatever vehicle it's, it's uh, that your funds are invested in, if you have uh, um, an emergency and you have to pull those funds out, just be aware that there is that 10% tax penalty immediately. And then, of course, when you file your taxes, um, uh, you'll have to, to pay those penalties as well. And so um, as uh, when we come back from our break, we're going to go through specific um, uh, ways to avoid those penalties because there are there are eight specific ways to avoid those penalties. And you ask, what are those eight um, ways to avoid the penalties? You'll have to wait till we come back. <laughs> You're listening to Jackie Sanders on Money Matters on Smooth 90.5 FM HD. It's 
Hmm, what should I be tagging? Do not tag. Do not tag. Okay. Uh, don't take it away, I'm saying it, but don't tag. Because you want people to listen and you're sending people to our fan page. Oh. They're okay. not listening live. Actually type in smooth 90.5 FM HD radio. Okay. Um uh, people are sitting up here sending messages. Where can they so they can't find the station, they can't listen to the station. I sent you a link. I sent you a link. Uh, copy. You have to copy that link. You have to copy that link and send it exactly as it is. Let me go back and grab that link. Is that what they said? Yes. Yeah. Oh. You're being heard from Canada, Oklahoma, Washington, New York, Arizona, all over. And people, that link that I sent you, mm -hmm. people are actually, they can go in and leave their comments and, and say, Could I, I, I see some of those comments? Because I'd like to see the comments as well. Okay. You well, know. well, really don't, you know, because you did that in the past. Mm -hmm. And broadcasting that upstairs. Well, who is this? Well, no, I'm not going to get upset. I'll use that. You know, I've, I've been doing this a while, so I want to know the feedback. Oh, okay. All right. Let's back up a little bit. Okay. 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 And I'm looking, that's why I'm looking over here. I'm looking at the meter mm -hmm. right here. And when, when it gets to a certain point, mm -hmm. that's when it starts to get distorted. Okay. That's why I go like this. You see me like this frantically? Yes. Because, uh, I'm looking at the meters right here, and it just gets boring right there. And I can't edit by... That's why the music is great to break up the monotony, you know. And even if it's not played the whole thing, it breaks up the monotony of um, just talk. I'm back. This is Jackie Dussard Sanders with Money Matters, and you're listening to me on Smooth 90.5 FM HD. And so 
um, make sure that you tune in. You can you can um, go in and, and uh, listen to us on um, share us and XM. You can also download us on your uh, mobile device. So make sure that you tune in. You go in and, and, and make sure you come out, come back week after week because every week we're going to have an interesting topic that you should definitely know about to affect your daily lives. And uh, so as we talk uh, today, we're talking about the 403B. Um, and for the last few years, we've uh, last few weeks, rather, we've been talking about retirement planning and the various vehicles that are available. And so uh, we've talked about the traditional um, pensions and in comparison to the 401k, in comparison to um, the Roth IRA in comparison to the traditional IRA. Um, um, we're going to talk about uh, SEP IRAs down the road as well. But today we're talking about the 403B um, and how it uh, compares and the um, benefits, the pros, the cons um, of the 403B so that you can include it um, in your financial planning. Now, I'm going to give the number uh, if you want to call in. Um, we welcome your calls. You can give us a call at 630-215-8582. That's 630-215-8582 here on Money Matters with Jackie Dussard Sanders. Now, before uh, we took a, a short break, we talked about... Um, uh, emergency situations where you may need to pull out some of the funds from um, the 403B um, and uh, uh, the penalties that are incurred. Uh, we know there's a upfront penalty of 10% and then of course when you file your income taxes at the end of the year or at the beginning of the new year, um, you want to make sure that you list uh, the withdrawal there as well because you'll also have to pay um, uh, for it being a premature withdrawal. So if you're not 59 and a half years old and uh, allowed to take out um, um, withdrawals without any penalties, uh, you are penalized unless you fall into uh, eight categories, eight ways to avoid those penalties. And so what are those eight ways to avoid the penalties? Number one, if you become permanently disabled, you have an accident or um, for if some reason you become ill and you are incapable of earning um, um, employment income, then um, you are allowed to support yourself and avoid that 10% early withdrawal penalty from the 403B. Uh, now, with this um, feature, you do need to get a uh, physician to certify the fact that you're either physically or mentally incapable of working and uh, that the condition um, is either um, going to be um, a condition that is going to last for a significant, uh, significant amount of time or um, it's, it's something that is incurable and so um, it will be something that will be eventual um, upon, until death. And so um, with the 403B, that is a feature that's embedded in this specific uh, vehicle. So number one, if you become permanently disabled and need to gain access to funds, um, this is an option. Number two, um, if you um, die early, uh, then those funds um, are made available without a penalty, um, of course, to uh, your, your heirs. It's the dispersed immediately um, with no penalty. And of course, there, there's, uh, or to your spouse, you know, to, to, to your, whoever your beneficiary is. Um, in most cases, it will be a spouse. Uh, so that's number two. Number three, um, if you use those funds for non-reimbursed medical expenses, there is no penalty. So if you have a medical condition 
um, that requires you to uh, go into your 403B, um, the expenses um, in, ex in excess of 7.5% of your adjusted gross income then there is no penalty. So I'm going to go back over that again. If you have a medical condition that you need to get funds to pay for those um, medical expenses that are incurred from that condition, then um, as long as those expenses are in excess of 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, there is no penalty. So... Um, we have it, the uh, eight ways to avoid the penalties. Number one, if you become permanently disabled. Number two, if there is an early passing. Number three, um, medical expenses. Number four, um, it's in home ownership, as we know, is encouraged. It's always great to uh, become a homeowner and. We'll even talk about that in some um, future shows, uh, talk about uh, various um, uh, ways to plan for uh, first-time home buyers and um, uh, even in, in investment um, buyers. So uh, we will talk about that down the road. Um, I have quite a bit of knowledge and experience in the mortgage industry and in mortgage financing, so I'm eager to share some of that knowledge with you as well. And so um, home ownership for first-time home buyers is another way to avoid uh, the early withdrawal fee of up to $10,000 in withdrawal. So you can take out up to $10,000 out of the 403B if you are a first-time home buyer looking to purchase a home without worrying about any penalties at all. I'm going to repeat that one. If you're a first time home buyer and you're looking to make a purchase and you have a 403B, you are allowed to pull out up to $10,000 out of your 403B without any penalties at all. I think that's a pretty good one because when you invest, I'm just going to sidebar real quick. When you invest in real estate, it puts you in a whole different category. You build up equity. Um, you're able to um, um, see the, the money that you are paying on a monthly basis. You get to see it actually work for your benefit. When you're paying rent, um, you know, th that money just goes to the landlord and none of it uh, you benefit uh, except the fact that it, it is a place of your residence there's no other benefit but when you become a homeowner then you start to have um, an asset it falls under the category of asset yeah, it can also be a liability, but the fact that it also falls under the category of asset is huge and speaks volumes of the things that you are able to do, uh, you know, down the road. And so I also encourage not only uh, to be a homeowner, but to invest in real estate as an investor uh, so that you can build your wealth. And so that is another option in, in retirement planning that we'll talk about down the road, how real estate can also be uh, a great avenue to building your wealth and to making sure that you have the type of lifestyle um, that you want to enjoy during retirement. So that is another option to avoid the penalty. First-time home buyers are allowed to pull out up to $10,000. That is huge. And so um, another uh, way to avoid um, that early withdrawal penalty on your money is if it's covering higher education costs. So if you're attending a college or university, we all know that um, college tuition 
it can be quite expensive. And so it allows you um, to uh, use some of those funds for qualifying educational cost. And it's exempt from that penalty. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's a form of human capital, knowledge capital. Um, you know, you're, uh, we talked a, a little bit earlier about making sure that you are doing well physically, that you're prospering physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. So it falls under that category. And so um, number six, uh, number six, you can pay back uh, taxes owed to the IRS. So that's another feature without having a penalty. So if you owe uh, monies to the IRS and you want to avoid those tax levies and and, and you want to uh, avoid them garnishing your bank accounts and you have a 403B, you're able to pay back uh, money that's owed to the IRS from a 403B without having to incur a penalty. And so, you know, some of us, we fall into that category where we're owing money to the IRS and wondering, okay, what can we do? Okay, we need to go on some type of payment plan with the IRS so that they're not dipping into my bank account, which they will do. Um, if, if you are not paying them back or you don't have some type of plan in place, um, and so this 403B um, gives another option uh, so that you can pay back those monies without having to incur a penalty. And so that's number six. Number seven, medical insurance premiums. Um, some medical insurance premiums can be exempt from that early withdrawal uh, penalty. Again, we talk that goes back to wellness. Uh, a lot of these, as you see, goes to um, making sure that we're whole um, in every aspect of our lives. And so, um, medical insurance premiums. We need to make sure that we're paying our premiums. We, we you know, uh, deadline for affordable health care is coming up in um, a few months, and uh, when that time comes, we'll be talking about medical insurance, we'll be talking about um, the importance of, of medical insurance and uh, uh, making sure that you're not penalized because now they have penalties, uh, picking the right plan for you. Um, you know, uh, there's so much conversation um, about affordable health care. A lot of people call it Obamacare, but the official name of it is affordable health care. And so we'll talk about the do's and don'ts of affordable health care, the benefits, the pros and the cons, closer to um, enrollment time so that you can be well informed um, as far as everything that you need to do to make sure that you're insured and that you're not penalized come tax time and that it can work as a benefit for you. I, I, I personally think um, uh, that it's a wonderful thing for us all to have health care. Um, uh, if you go abroad, uh, they have free health care, they have free education in um, many other countries, and they're wondering why it's taking us here in the United States um, so long to realize that um, we should catch up with the rest of the world. And so um, I was actually in Germany a few years ago during the, um, the stoppage of our government. Uh, you know, everything was shut down because they were fighting over um, health care. Um, and so, uh, you know, they were wondering, um, what is the big deal? You know, we have it here and it's wonderful. You know, why are we having... Uh, why are you guys having such big problems? It just happens to be it just happened to be the same time that I was there that that was going on here, and of course those who knew we were Americans, um, it was a, a educational trip for school, and so um, uh, those who knew we were Americans, they just wanted to find out 
what's the big deal? Why? Well, you know? And so, you know, it, it became a little bit embarrassing. But um, that is another um, uh, purpose. You can use your 403B to pay medical insurance premiums without incurring that tax penalty. And so now let's talk about number eight. Num uh, number eight uh, is uh, beneficiaries that's turning 59 and a half years old are not subject to that early withdrawal penalty. Peace. Vanessa Bell Armstrong, one of my favorites. Oh, 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 oh,
This is Jackie Dussard Sanders with Money Matters on Smooth 90.5 FM. That was Tamala Mann with Take Me to the King. And before that, we had an oldie but a goodie uh, by Vanessa Bell Armstrong. And uh, those are two of my favorite songs when I, I need some encouragement and I need to go to the king and I need to have some peace. That, those are the songs that I go to. Uh, you know, I was privileged enough to actually meet both of them. I met uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong uh, several years ago. I had to do an interview, and I got a chance to interview her. And then I met Tamala Mann um, at a Stella Award event um, several years ago. So it was really nice meeting them both in person. Um, and, you know, especially Vanessa Bell Armstrong, for me, uh, that was just um, just. I, words can't describe. I got a chance to talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. She talked about her career, her childhood, and uh, that was a, a, a big highlight in, in, in the life of Jackie Dussard Sanders. So um, I hope that you enjoyed those two songs um, and, uh, and that you um, share uh, the, the feelings that I have when I hear them and that you will actually uh, take, take whatever um, issues you have to the king and uh, if you happen to be going through something uh, and you need to call some peace there have been times I was driving and had to pull over to the road uh, to listen to Vanessa Bell Armstrong um, those are two very anointed women so let's get back to our conversation on 403Bs uh, we talked about uh, the drawbacks of the penalties we talked about ways to avoid the penalties and so now we're going to talk a little bit about the um, the distributions just as with the 401k 
uh, traditional IRA, uh, there is a calendar date that um, withdrawals have to start come um, start coming out from those vehicles, and they're called uh, distributions. So, um, you if you turn seventy and a half um, by April first of that specific year, uh, then you have to start taking your mandatory distributions, your mandatory distributions from the 403B. And the plan, um, it permits employees who are still employed to delay that. So if you happen to be a 70 and a half um, year old that's still working, you're like, I, I, I don't want to retire yet. I'm enjoying my time. I, I enjoy what I do. This is part of my passion. I've been doing it for X amount of years, and, you know, I'm still working uh, part-time or what have you. It's, it's fulfilling to me. Then uh, you, can delay, um, you can delay that mandatory retirement uh, withdrawal distribution until after you have actually retired. And so if you're 70 and a half and you are still working, that is an exception to the rule of having to take that, um, that mandatory distribution. And this is available uh, to those employees um, who are still working unless you own 5% or more of the company. So... If you own 5% or more of that company that you're still working um, at and it's your passion or what have you, uh, you cannot avoid that mandatory distribution. That is the exception to the rule. So let me just go over that again to make sure there's no confusion. If you are 70 and a half years old after April 1st of that calendar year, and um, you have a 403B, you have to start taking mandatory distributions unless you are still working for the company. That is an exception. Then you would not have to take the, man the mandatory uh, distribution unless you own 5% or more of the company. So if you're self-employed and you own 5% or more of that company, then it's a wash. You you cannot avoid the mandatory distribution. And so the, the reason is um, simple. The purpose of the 403B account is for retirement saving, is to save for your retirement. And so um, the, the government uh, want to make sure that, for the most part, they stay in sync with the, um, the purposes of all of these retirement vehicles. And so the, uh, we know that with the Roth IRA, we talked about that last week, that that is tax-free. The taxes are taken up front. And so when you withdraw from the Roth IRA, there are no taxes ever. So you don't have to pay any taxes because you've already taken care of it up front. So some people prefer tax-free vehicles. They're, they're like, okay, I want to take care of this up front because when I'm older and I get my money, I don't want to have to pay the IRS a red cent. So I'd rather do this up front and not have to worry about it when I retire. Other people are, okay, I want to earn my money tax-deferred while I'm earning my money as I'm getting older. I want this money to grow tax-deferred. And by the time I'm retired, I'll be in a different tax bracket because I'll be older and I'll be ready at that time to uh, pay money on, on the uh, funds that I've, that I've acquired because I earned it, uh, tax deferred all these years, and I was able to accumulate um, my interest on this vehicle. And so, you know, I'm okay with having to pay my taxes at the end. It's really depending on your preference. And some people prefer tax-free vehicles. Other people prefer tax-deferred vehicles. Regardless of whichever you choose, just make sure that you choose wisely. 
And so the purpose of Money Matters is to make sure that we inform you of your various options so that when you're diversifying uh, your retirement planning and your retirement investments, you are choosing vehicles that will actually build well so that when you retire, and myself included, so that I should say when we retire, when we retire, we have a real nice nest egg that we have planned for, that we have made sure to, to invest in so that we can live a comfortable life. And it's especially important in our community. And, and you know, I think about this, so, you know, I don't know if you watch the um, Republican convention and the Democratic convention over the last few weeks. I did because it's important. Um, you know, you see, the, although this is not a political show, it's about money. Believe it or not, uh, the representatives who are elected affect your money. It affects your money matters. It affects the laws that are in place for housing, for investing, for banking. Uh, it, it, it matters. It matters if the representatives who are elected are concerned about all the people or if they're just concerned about specific people. So I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I'm included when they're talking about the people, when they're talking about the voters, when they're talking about the American people. I want to make sure that I'm included in that number. So um, make sure that you are going to vote. Whether you fall into uh, millennial or baby boomer or senior, just make sure that you go out there and, and give your vote. Especially in our community, people uh, died for that right. And it's a part of every aspect of our lives. And the show is, is here to talk about um, financial literacy and education, about every aspect of our daily lives. Because your money matters. Because your money matters, everything matters. That affects your daily living and affects your retirement, affects your employment, affects your housing, uh, affects your families. And so I'm so glad that you decided to join me here on Money Matters with Jackie Dussard Sanders. I'm here every Friday, 11 to 12, and I want you to tell all of your friends. I want you to tell your family. I want you to tell your coworkers to tune in because we've got some great topics that affect all of us that we'll be talking about in the upcoming weeks, upcoming months. We'll have some guests uh, that will talk about tax advantages and um, we'll talk about um, um, investing and, and some of the things that we've talked about over the last few weeks. We'll talk about housing, first time home buyers, investing in real estate. And so I want you to make sure you tune in. And you've listened to me and I appreciate it. Please join me again on next week as I come to you on Smooth 90.5 FM HD. This has been Jackie Dussard Sanders with Money Matters. Enjoy your weekend, and God bless.